Hi, everybody. Mitch Tanbam here. Thanks for joining me today. This is the security news update for this week. Uh, in uh, security and privacy alerts, uh, Big Brother is watching. Uh, currently, 93 airports use facial recognition as part of the TSA process. And by next year, the TSA would like to up that number to 200 airports, but Congress is not necessarily so uh, positive on the issue. Obviously, the, the concern is privacy. You know, maybe TSA will do good. They don't have a great track record, but but who knows? Other countries are doing this as well. First country that did it was China. And we know they have a great uh, privacy reputation. So um, it's not clear. Um, the airlines are also starting to use this technology, uh, and those folks probably will play by looser rules. And finally, Customs and Border Protection is using this, this uh, technology as well. Um, they will store your data uh, potentially for up to 75 years. So that's a long time. Um, and I've used the customs uh, process and it's, it's pretty compelling. Um, but still, you got to worry about, you know, is the government going to lose control of it? And the problem with biometrics is once it's out in the wild, you can't undo it, right? You can't get a new fingerprint, you can't get a new eye, eye print, whatever. Um, so that's, that's really a problem. In the reference uh, section, uh, the CISO and the SEC, you know, with the recent conviction of Joe Sullivan, the former chief security officer at Uber, and then the uh, SolarWind CISO, Tim Brown, being charged, uh, you know, it makes CISOs uh, think twice, or at least they should, and other senior IT executives, uh, whether they're going to get drug into a company's lawsuit. What that means, of course, is that those people need to start asking questions of corporate management. Um, you know, and then they got to make some, some life decisions as, as to whether or not they want to continue working for a company where they could wind up getting sucked into something that could be, well, in the case of Joe Sullivan, you know, he got wound up with a $50,000 fine, which I think he got for 200 hours of community service, but he escaped jail time. And the judge said, you know, don't count on that happening a second time. This was a unusual circumstance. Next, under important issues, uh, we have learned through congressional testimony that Change Healthcare does not have cyber insurance. They're going to spend well over a billion dollars. Now, you know, they can maybe afford it, probably afford it, right? Their annual revenue is about three to four billion dollars. They're probably going to spend about half of that um, in recovering from this breach and uh, the lawsuits that ensue. Uh, so this is this is a half of their annual one year's annual revenue, not half of their profit. So, you know, think about this. Could you afford half of your revenue to cover a breach? Um, most companies couldn't do that. Uh, so, you know, uh, words of the wise, you may want to think about getting cyber insurance. And if you need help with that, obviously, please reach out to us. Uh, next, under legislative and legal, the uh, velocity of, of new state privacy laws is is pretty impressive between the laws that are on the books today, the laws, the bills that are in the legislature. And some states have like a half a dozen, you know, um, you know, New York has nine. Uh, it's pretty impressive uh, in terms of the number of uh, laws and bills that are out there. Um, you know, by the time this year is done, you know, potentially 36 states will have uh, at least looked at uh, state privacy laws, and a goodly chunk of that number will, in fact, probably have passed state privacy laws. So, you know, if you have data, uh, now is the time to start thinking about what your privacy program is going to look like, because you may get sucked in uh, to that whole thing. Under education, uh, the FTC is looking at new commercial surveillance rules. Um, and, you know, boy, that's that's a big pile of you know what that they're stepping into this time. Um, they're likely to roll this out sooner rather than later. And, uh, you know, what they call surveillance is what uh, Facebook calls revenue. And so, you know, it, it's going to be an interesting challenge. You know, they would like these guys to minimize data and protect it. Um, we shall see. Uh, this, that's going to be a rocky road for sure. Under the breaches department, uh, the city of Wichita government shut down after a ransomware attack. They're not really saying much about it, but, uh, uh, Kansas has had problems in the past. They had a 
rebuild their entire criminal justice environment after a ransomware attack last fall. Um, next, the Brandywine Real Realty Trust uh, loses has lost data, um, and you know we're seeing this, and I think this is going to kind of sort out over after a while. But you know what they said in their SEC disclosure is uh, they had unauthorized access and the deployment of the encryption. I think that's what most of us would call ransomware. Um, and uh, they're still trying to figure out what files the hacker took. Uh, and until they do that, obviously they can't notify folks. Next, the University of Georgia, uh, which operates 26 public colleges, had a breach a year ago, literally a year ago. They uh, lost control of the data of 800,000 people. Um, they're not saying who those people were, Likely, these are students and former students and maybe staff and you know, faculty. But uh, the information was uh, that was compromised includes federal income tax returns. So that sounds like student aid, so it sounds like maybe students. Um, the breach was part of the Move It breach last year, where we were, you know another day, another organization would say they were hit by the Move It breach. Uh, why it took them a year, whether they consider that uh, timely, whether the lawsuits will now proceed, all not clear, but um, you know, it makes you nervous about sharing data with folks. Next, Ascension Health, which is one of the largest um, nonprofit uh, healthcare organizations. They operate 140 hospitals and 40 senior living centers in 19 states. Uh, today, they're uh, rediscovering pencils and paper. It's a good day in rediscovering that uh, after they detected unusual activity, whatever that means. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, they, they say they've initiated procedures to ensure patient care delivery continues to be safe and is minimally impacting as possible. I get the idea about minimally impacting. I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. You know, but, but how do you deliver safe patient care when you don't know what the test results are of the patient? You don't know what medications are on. You don't know what previous... Uh, you know, uh, doctor visits uh, said, you know, they're telling patients, well, we'll bring whatever notes you have and bring your pill bottles too, because we don't have a clue what you have, but it's going to be safe. And I, I, I understand why they're saying that because, you know, they're, they're going to wind up being the target of lawsuits no matter what they do. And they certainly don't want to exacerbate that, but still, I mean, it's, it's a real challenge. Um, they are diverting ambulances in many cases because they can't take care of sick people. If they can't do tests and they can't look at results and they can't look at medical histories um, and they don't know how long this is going to take to recover. So we shall see. Next, uh, the Verizon data breach report says that supply chain breaches are up 68%. If, if you've listened to me or read uh, my blog, you know that I harp on that a lot. Um, and supply chain, the problem with supply chain, you know, change healthcare is a perfect example of, of supply chain. You know, you hit one organization, one part of the supply chain. In the case of healthcare, you get thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people. You know, that's a hell of a return on investment if you're a hacker. Um, not so good if you're using them. But I think what that means is that you as a um, company need to start really uh, thinking about what your supply chain risk management strategy is you need help with that, of course, please reach out to us. CISA is extending the comment period on Circea. Circea is a law that was passed in 2022 that requires CISA to create a set of regulations for reporting cyber incidents uh, with critical infrastructure. Uh, and critical infrastructure operators would really like this bill to go away. Uh, or not the bill, it's already passed. The rules to go away. Um, that's technically possible. I don't think that's likely to occur so what's going to happen is they extended the comment period by 30 days no big deal uh now they have to go finalize the rules after they finalize the rules then congress has the ability to ax them uh but on the other hand congress doesn't want to look weak uh and say oh yeah critical infrastructure you know all these breaches you had no big deal and you know colonial pipeline you know um extension health uh, change healthcare no no big deal don't worry about it it's 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 just not important. So I think that's really unlikely that Congress is going to go kill it. They may grumble a lot, which Congress likes to do, but I don't think they're going to kill it. So I think that's going to happen. It's probably going to happen next year. Uh, and critical infrastructure operators, 
Uh, you know, and we're seeing this with a lot of regulated industries. You know, they have to at least say something within just a few days. You know, in the case of, of banks, for example, if they have a material event, they have to notify the federal regulators within 36 hours. You know, if you're a DOD contractor, you got 72 hours. You know, the SEC, you got 96 hours. It's just, it's just not a long time. And understandably, companies don't really know a lot within that period. But I think it's going to become uh, imperative on the part of companies to become more knowledgeable more quickly because investors are going to go off and start saying, you know, we don't like this. This is not so good. And that will affect stock prices, of course. Next, we have a battle between states' rights and national and national privacy law. Um, obviously, businesses would like a single uniform national privacy law. I understand that completely. Uh, states, on the other hand, are saying, uh, wait, what about us? You, you you told us that states' rights were important to, to you. Well, I think that's mostly a smokescreen done for political purposes because when push comes to shove, at least in the last, say, 10 years, uh, when they have an opportunity to overrule states' rights because it's convenient for them, uh, they do that. One exception to that, which obviously was not done by Congress, is the uh, national abortion rights. That was done by the courts, so Congress doesn't get any credit for that. But, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens in terms of, of this. I'd say the odds in an election year, this is May, they have a few more months. You know, could they go off and pass a, a national privacy law? It's possible. I certainly wouldn't rule it out, but, you know, Congress is pretty dysfunctional. So, uh, you know, I'd say the odds are low, but, you know, uh, I've been wrong before. What I would like, if there is a national privacy law, that it's reasonably strong. And not just a fig leaf. My that's my big concern. That's I think what a lot of the state senators are worried about is that you know something will pass, but it'll be garbage. Uh, that would not be the first time Congress did that. Uh, and uh, last, you know, the uh, screen news bites for this week. Uh, TikTok, no surprise here, is suing the U.S. government, both TikTok and ByteDance, uh, and they vow to prevail. Well, of course, you know. Who's going to say, yeah, we're going to sue you, but we expect to lose. I would not expect them to say anything different than that. Uh, Google un unveiled something called Google Threat Intelligence, which is a, a super high-end threat uh, information solution. You know, I think for Fortune 2000 companies, it's going to be interesting. I don't think it's going to be affordable by most businesses. So, um, you know, I guess for the large guys, you know, you know 2,000 out of 30 million, it, it could be useful. Uh, but, you know, if it somehow trickles down, then it could turn out to be um, uh, useful. Uh, the AI model war continues. Microsoft has announced that it plans to build a bigger and better large language model to better compete with OpenAI and Google. Um, you know, even though, you know, Microsoft is a huge investor in OpenAI, they're doing their own thing anyway. So we shall see. That, you know, just means the AI battle is uh, nonstop and, and you know, bottom line is there's too much money to be made, so that's why it's nonstop. AT&T, uh, I don't think they announced this exactly, has an interesting strategy to, to um, uh, uh, reduce spam. Um, they shut off receiving mail from Google and Microsoft. Okay, interesting strategy. I'm not sure the users are going to be terribly happy about that. Um, I think they're, they're trying to figure out what to do about that. Don't think that was intentional on their part. That was just the, the side effect of what they were doing. Uh, but nonetheless, if you're an at t mail user, uh, you know, you may see some disruption in receiving your mail. Uh, and last, uh, Dell loses information on about 49 million customers. It's a really, really stupid attack. Uh, you would think that a company as bright as Dell would not have fallen for this attack. It's just, just you know, child's play kind of attack. Uh, they have fixed it now that someone pointed it out to them, but but it's just it it is forever amazes me that people you know th this kind of attack happens you know at least once a year to somebody. So um, until next time, uh, if you have questions, please reach out to us. We'd be happy to answer them for you, uh, and uh, stay safe. Uh, keep your privacy shields up. And, uh, you know, good hunting. Thanks for listening. Thank you for watching. 
For more information or to purchase this or any other of our board or executive services, visit us at cybersecurity.com. Call us at 303-887-5864 or email us at rh at cybersecurity.com. Goodbye.